I love this man. He knows. He knows. He's like, mm. since there's nothing but words, you won't mind just sitting there watching him get it on with another girl, will you? Mm. Mm. He's like, y'all gonna work this out one way or another because I got a war to win. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha K Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Shogun. We are now on to episode six, which is called Ladies of the Willow World. So the last episode, the highlights were that Toranaga was starting to plan for this upcoming battle that was triggered by his son's rather rash actions. We see that he got to the bottom of who was actually the perpetrator behind getting his son to do these actions. So he's got his eye out, but at this point he knew that at some point, this war had to kick off. So he's just dealing with the cards that he was dealt. And then really the focus of this episode was the drama at John's house. First of all, because of a very brutal lesson that he had to learn about culture and the differences in culture around the servant in his house ending up losing his life because John gave an order, not really understanding the weight of that order or the weight of the hierarchy system in Japan. So that was a really rough lesson for him to learn. And then on top of that, we see that Mariko, who is his new love interest, um, well, whether he's expressed it out loud, but I think we as an audience know that that's his new love interest. Her husband, Bontoro, who was believed dead, returned. And not only returned, but he was hale and healthy. So that has created a new obstacle and uh, Toranaga ordered for Bontoro to go to the same house as John and Mariko. So that created a very tense situation. That tense situation turned into the two of them getting into it over dinner. And in turn, Bontoro decided to take that out on Mariko and she ended up getting hurt. And this caused John to wanna to go ahead and take Bontoro out, which I think was very valid. But Bontoro realized how much he'd messed up at that point and publicly, made sure to make it was publicly, apologized to John to get Toranaga to not be upset with him really. So he nearly averted death at that point, but this whole situation turns out to be too much for John. He asks Toranaga if he can go home. Uh, also because after this happens, Mariko actually tells John that their business relationship is going to be only business, no more personal relationships, no more personal talks, just work. So all of these things, John says, you know what? I want to leave, goes to Toranaga and asks for his boat back and his men. Toranaga doesn't give him an answer, however, because he recognizes that there's beef between him and Mariko. And he thinks that this is the reason that John really wants to go home. And before they can even get into it, they're hit with a massive earthquake. One that is so big that we almost lose Toranaga, but we also see that a good chunk of the village ends up getting destroyed by a resulting landslide. So I'm not sure whether or not Toranaga's men were affected by this, but it's very possible. And it's just the worst time for something like this to happen when they're preparing for a battle. So that, and then the other thing that happened at the end of the episode is that we finally got to see more of this character of Lady Ochiba. We hadn't really seen much of her outside of back in episode two, we've heard about her, but she returned and we only had about a two minute scene with her, but it was enough to tell me that she is not to be played with, that she is not at all what she seems. She gives off the very calm and demure vibes, but, or demure, sorry, the calm and demure act, but the vibes are giving that she's very, very knowing and she's very dangerous. So yeah, I'm excited to find out more about her and kind of what she's got in this game that's going on, this power struggle. She seems invested in wanting the Regency to win, but I just have a sneaking suspicion there's more going on between her and Toranaga than what meets the eye. So I'm ready to jump into this episode, but just before I do, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I do uploads on this particular show or anything else you might be watching of mine, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell and please show some love to the video with likes and comments if you'd like to, I'd appreciate it. I love reading your comments and all the different perspectives. It's really, really refreshing. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. こちらがマリコと申します。そしてマリコ殿の父上、明智人才殿。わしの新たな家臣じゃ。ああ、they're Really? I think she knows better. Okay, so this is the leader. So this must have what, what, what happened that led Akachi to eventually assassinate the leader. 
so okay i was like did they both learn to fight Oh, was this maybe the beginnings of some jealousy? Oh yeah, because her and Toranaga liked each other. Yeah, but he's not a nice guy. Hmm. Guess that's how it felt back then. That's an interesting way to look at it. That's how it goes for a lot of women back then. Some of them are just like, just take the happiness where you can. Others were like, nope, I'm a bucket <laughs> the entire time. It's not okay. Mm. And what was that greater good? So was the dad planning for this? Maybe the dad was planning because he knew he was going to take out the leader and he knew that they would come after her. And if she's not part of his family anymore... So he planned for this. This is why he did it. But I get it for Mariko. Because back then, when you gave a child in marriage, especially a daughter, she was no longer a part of your family anymore. She'd be considered part of the husband's family. So, ah, uh, that's rough on Mariko, though. It looks like her and her dad were super close. And I, oh no, her mother was around because she said her mom was taken out during the revolt thing. So, but interesting. I did not know her and Ochiba were friends. <laughs> It's a very interesting line and very true. I actually like that. That's a really good bar. I mean, death sucks regardless, but if you look at it that way, that it's proof that you did at least get to live. Oh, that's going to tick some people off. He doesn't want to stay, though. Ooh! I mean, maybe if you saved him, you get a higher rank. I get it. For John, this is a bit of a catch-22. You don't want to disrespect this man, but he don't want to stay either. Oh. oh my god, bro. Just go to him then. I'm over it. I mean, you had it for like 15 seconds. Mm, let's focus on what's important. I can't believe it, but Yabushige is actually speaking sense right now. <laughs> Sorry, it shouldn't be funny, but it kind of is. I forgot he already wrote one a couple episodes ago. Oh, man. Really? It's got to be a prayer contest, John? You couldn't have just gone and prayed in your own room? But I guess he's upset about the fact that she won't talk to him, so... And that symbolic, literal wall between them. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If it's her, that's the problem, which it's not. Oh, grateful that you're you're abusing her? Okay. Mm. Oh, you wanted her to like you when you hated her and looked down on her. Okay. And you didn't even once try to understand where she was coming from? Ah, you've noticed that already, huh? Ooh. Tea. Good idea. You need to go away. Figure out how to divorce. But Mariko gets the boy. Well, that's not what he asked. I'm unable to serve him in the way he wishes me to. Hmm. So I wish to leave. Yeah, he's like, I recognize a trap when I see one. <laughs> Harming trade to the ports controlled by his Catholic rivals on the council. I'm told their names are Kiyama and Ono. Thus stifling the flow of Portuguese Catholic wealth and its accompanying power, which will mm. ultimately be brandished against him. 
I mean, Joan's not wrong. He's like, I came here for a reason. May as well get what I want, too. I'm sorry, were you going to translate? He wasn't, but she will. <laughs> He's like, today? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What does this benefit mean? They're hit again in the name of their god. Why do you cling to this? Yeah, right? He's like, hello? What is going on between you two? Figure it out. I would politely ask you to tell him Portugal is friendly only to their prophets. Aren't you? This, weren't you here for the same reason though, John? Just, just saying. Pot kettle. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. He's like, let me talk about whatever's going on between y'all. Since your husband just mentioned that there's a little something, something he's picking up on. Mm-hmm. そこで一番上等の友情を。うん、シュー。アンジンの友もいたせ。おう。通じ役者。アンジンが枕を交わしながら話す。おまいガッ、ドラナ。You <laughs> Get it on with another girl, will you? Mm. Mm. He's like, y'all gonna work this out one way or another because I got a war to win. <laughs> oh, Toranaga, I love you. Uh, can you? That fully pregnant woman should not be... No, there's no way. There's no way. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's she's too big. It has to be. She's he's not wrong. She cannot travel right now. Fully pregnant and on a full gallop, that ain't happening. And he's ordered that no region shall be allowed to leave until was in her or was that Ochiba? I think it was Ochiba. This is her doing. The lady Ochiba? Ah! We got a smart one! Campaign to eliminate Toranaga. It has accelerated since her return. That woman has no such power. <laughs> Oh, sir, you clearly exactly have not been around a powerful woman. I think the time has come for us to turn towards Toranaga as an ally. You don't say. I mean, I think he's got the right idea. She seriously terrifies me, I'm not going to lie. This fake calm she has going on. Okay, so her best friend leaves in marriage, which clearly upset her. And then what happens? So her father was the last ruler? The cruel ruler. So that's why she hates Tornaga. Oh, no. So then she would hate. Okay. I thought maybe her and Mariko could still be friends, but I get now why they probably can't, even though Mariko had nothing to do with it directly. That was beautiful. That was a stage fall if I ever saw one. I'm glad you recognize. That's hilarious that she's keeping them hostage and making them watch a play. You think so, huh? Exactly. Once you guys got caught, you're caught. She's not going to let you go after. Exactly. You will serve your purpose and you will be eliminated. Mm -hmm. Ashido is definitely either in love with her or she's given him a little bit of that sugar sugar to keep him in line. Either way. Exactly. I'm with her. Dear God. Careful, ma'am. Careful, ma'am. This lady looks to me like she would take you out. Okay, that's his late wife. A mirror? That's what I get for carrying someone's big headed baby and pushing it out? A mirror? Okay, so that's what the plot is. She lost her dad, lost her position, had to become a consort. 
But now she's taking it back. Oh, God. Yep. No. Oh, God. Yep. This is literally her village villain origin story right here. Look at her face. Okay, so maybe my theory about Toranaga being the father is not it, because I still haven't seen any connection between those two outside of her. Once again, looking at him back when they were, when the girls were fighting. Why are we talking about this with an actor? Oh, you want to give the seat to him? I guess it doesn't matter. They just need somebody there because you're going to take them all out anyway. Mm, really? Hmm. Don't get too familiar. Oh? Hmm. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a little curious where this is coming from. Because he rejected you? Hmm? A little redirection of, the co of that conversation to stroke his ego. Masterful. Interesting. I need to know, too, because how? I got some theories, but let me just keep watching and see if I'm right or wrong. Oh, God, is he okay? Is he just dehydrated? Facts. Yeah, I was about to say, I think they're biding their time right now. What is Crimson Sky? Plan? Telling this man is a bad idea. Both of those. Yabashigi and his jerk of a nephew. No. Speaking of strangling your own neck. Why are you telling all of his secrets right now? Is that okay? Time for what? Calm down. Did he see anything on family's legacy? Exactly. Thank you. Mm. Exactly. Get creative. And also, now that that traitor knows, there's no way he's doing that plan. Kiku? When she pretty sure she was plotting with Omi a couple episodes ago. Right? Chillax. She's not that important. Exactly. You're not getting five, hun. You need money. I think you go to three. <laughs> I love her face like, mm, it's true. Exactly. 200. <laughs> uh, Fuji's like, ooh, the tea's getting good. <laughs> oh, we'll see. The focus on the cups is interesting. Didn't I say 300 is where we'd end up? I'm not mad at the lady though, because I mean, listen, back then there was not a lot of jobs women could do. This woman is getting her money and all four women entrepreneurs. Well, you're not even trying to understand, so that's why. Well, maybe spend a night with him first and see if you still feel the same way. Usually wives like me are not permitted to go through the gate. But in this case, a special exception has been made. He's like, wait, you're gonna watch? <laughs> That's probably not something to know about. There is nothing to know. Hmm, okay, so John... John has figured it was her and not a courtesan. You must be careful. Our every gesture is being observed. Very true. There's lots of secrets that are churning in this place. This is a very pretty room, though. I'm not gonna lie. The view, exquisite. <laughs> the way she 
she keeps looking at her like, I might send Kiku in a bit late, if you know what I'm saying, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. What is this face? <laughs> we must try our best to find this as pleasurable as possible. No, no I might have found this pleasurable. By not really? Really, John? You've never fantasized about being with a girl while a pretty girl watches? I just feel like that might have been somewhere up there in your fantasy bank. I compliment the way she poured your sake. It is considered a rare art. Courtesans like you could only study it for years. Exactly. You pour very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sis, let them know how you get paid this this mount. Where I come from, our prostitutes are neither this well presented nor as inquisitive. Okay. <laughs> I love the way that Mariko edits. Why not? Most come here to escape from boredom or pain. Hardship or disappointment. Interesting that she took a seat behind Mariko. The people she meets wish for a different life or circumstance. They want to be any place other than where they are. John's like, damn, this woman's like a psychiatrist. This is amazing. <laughs> I ask you. <laughs> Mariko, my goodness, Kiko's good. She got them both in one speech. Girl, you better pay her double. Oh, not her going into PTSD. Never mind. Yeah. Mm hmm. Interesting. I had a feeling maybe that Kiku was setting them up because it would definitely benefit Omi if those two were caught doing something. But I would have to think she wouldn't be, I don't know, I was gonna say that careless, but even the madam was like, this place is very private, very dark. If things were to happen. Okay, John. She's still married. Though I'm really hoping that Buntoro divorces her. Like praying, begging. I don't know if both sides, I don't think a woman could file for divorce back then, right? So it would have to be Buntoro. Are you jealous now too? <laughs> Mm. She is honored. <laughs> the editing. I love it, Mariko. I love it. Petty without being overly petty. Joan's like, why do I look like I just cheated? Why are you looking at me like that? I didn't do nothing. I mean, I did, but I didn't do nothing. That's assuming that they did. It's very possible John didn't. Hmm. So is there really something going on between these two? I thought he was hiring her, but maybe he's not. Outside of the trauma? Yep, you were married, and then she was a consort. Hmm. That's what I'm wondering, too. I thought you would have known, sir. But your definition of honor, can women even fulfill that? Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. You're looking at it from the wrong lens. Exactly. Let him know. Those plans can still be there. Look at that. Oh! She's never letting that one go, understandably. Yeah, to keep you safe. Exactly. I don't think he would have known that Bantoro would turn out to be such an ass. How could she? Oh, honey, no. Not at all. How? You did the best with what you had. And God knows, Bantoro probably lied to him about what he was going to do for you anyway. Come on, someone, someone be a brat. Come on. 
<laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thank you. You out here holding us hostage, talking about democracy. And you insult him? You're going to die, but I appreciate it. He just called all y'all traitors. Mm, so frustrating, isn't it? Oh, now we're impeaching him? God, every day of the day you're impeaching somebody. I don't think that's her strong suit. Especially after she's waited God knows how long for all this. Yes, please let us know what this man did to you. Mm -hmm. You think so? Really? Yeah, do we have proof? Or is this just an inkling? Yeah, do you approve? Well, that's true too. He's smarter than all of you. <laughs> Damn, but that was a that was a kick to the ego. <clears throat> mm, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. That should never have happened to you. Okay. Because the Taiko was not the father. Mm. Didn't I say this woman was crazy? Bro, you should have left the castle already. I really don't think that hurts his feelings. Damn, whole family. That's the only reason I, I shouldn't have cheered so hard at him being impertinent, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Really? Mm. Damn, we're back to that. Okay. I hope he's got a backup plan. I don't like the sound of this plan at all. It's making me uneasy. These men don't look as resolved as I'd like. Okay, that's a big ass camp. Woo, here we go, guys. Here we go. Woo, that was a lot. That episode was a lot to take in. That was a lot to take in, but I'm glad that we finally have some history on what's going on with Lady Ochiba. I mean, again, she kind of snuck into the end of the last episode, but we didn't really get to see much. And now we have a little bit more understanding of potentially what her motivations are of going up against Tornaga and why she has such a direct desire to take him out entirely. So let's just talk about that really quickly about the flashbacks. Now we know that there was a, there was a relationship between Mariko and Ochiba. I didn't realize they were the same age, but they are about the same age. And Ochiba was the daughter of the last leader. And we know that from Meriko's story that the last leader was before the last Taiko, the, the leader before the last Taiko, that he was known as being very cruel and he was, you know, in the views of her father and I guess by Toranaga by extension, that he needed to go because he was making decisions that didn't make sense. And we saw a quick scene of that leader beheading a bunch of people. I'm not sure who they were. We didn't get any context, but it was very clear that Akechi, who's Mariko's father, did not approve of it. He even tried to stop, get involved, but Toranaga was like, no, you can't do this, at least not here, not now. So the person who heard that was, was it Mariko? Yeah, Mariko overheard her um, Toranaga saying, this is not the time. So again, I don't know if it was only her, maybe Ochiba heard that too, but either way, oh, maybe, or maybe Mariko told her. Anyways, Mariko saw that. So Toranaga, that line of not now, this is not the time, does lend itself to what Ochiba is saying, that potentially Toranaga is who inspired Akechi to assassinate her father. But 
I don't know. I don't feel like Toronaga is the kind of, actually, I shouldn't say that. Toronaga could, but I don't know. I don't think he would ask somebody to do that for him. I feel like he'd be the kind who would do it or find somebody else to do it. But anyway, so we have that history. And basically the two of them grew up and they were very, very close, Mariko and uh, Ochiba. And then eventually we see that Akechi arranged for the marriage of Mariko to Buntoro. And as I said in the episode, we see that this was very upsetting for Mariko because she loved her family very much and she didn't like the idea of being pulled from her family to go to another family. And like they were saying that I guess Pantoro's family didn't have the type of connections that made sense for the level that Akechi and his family were at. So it was like she was marrying down and she was like, besides that, like I'm going to be away from you, away from my family. So in her words, she felt like her dad was getting rid of her, but that was not the case. As I said in the episode, and it got confirmed at the end, her dad was doing it because he knew that something had to be done about that ruler and that when that happened, the ripple effect would potentially blow back on his family. So by marrying off his daughter, she became part of Bantaro's family. And therefore the execution orders, if they had to come, her his daughter would be absolved from that because she was part of another family. And so it was really all of a plan. And again, I don't think that her father knew that Bantura would turn out to be the savage that he is. But either way, I guess in his mind, he just thought this is the best. This is the lesser evil of her getting her away from me, getting away from our family and sparing her life. So that happened. And when Mariko left, that was really when her and Ochiba no, were no longer really close. Because that makes sense. When people get married, that often happens where... You're just not that close as you used to be anymore. But anyway, after that, we see that the that former leader was taken out. And I believe, was it? Okay, I think maybe, yeah. So it's just a, I think it was just the former leader that was taken out. But as a result, because Ochiba was not married at that point, she really didn't have a family to back her. And I'm assuming that the, the role, the title, the level of like, maybe some of the levels of prestige she would have had probably went with her father. Like, I don't think she lost everything. Otherwise she would have been chosen as a courtesan. But my point is she probably could have been a wife. She could have been a proper wife, a proper, um, just have a proper title. Again, I know that consorts back then actually had quite a bit of power and prestige, but you get my point. I don't think that's what she wanted. But of course the new Tycho came and she was selected to be a consort because well, first of all, he liked pretty women. We heard that back in episode two, but also the fact that the, the wife of the last Tycho was like, he needs an heir. All the other concerts we have haven't been able to do it. At that point, Ochiba was young and she probably figured there's a very good chance that that could happen. And we uh, later find out that that was not the greatest thing ever. But yes, we see that's what happened. And that definitely gives us some insight into why she would have beef now potentially with Mariko, even though Mariko had nothing to do with it directly, but that was still her father. So there's possibility that there's a bit of a, a feeling there. And then the fact that she knows that Toranaga has gone out of his way to protect Mariko, that might be feeding into Ochiba thinking that maybe Mariko knew something about it or is in support of what happened. But again, I can see how they, could, they would just clash on the fact that you know, Mariko's dad did this thing and that's Mariko's dad. So she would love him and try to like support him. And then of course, Ochiba who's like, well, yeah, but my dad's still gone. So I don't know if Ochiba felt the same way about her dad either. We don't know if she didn't think his dad, her dad was in the wrong, but I mean, even if she did, I don't think she would think he deserved death, you know? So anyway, so getting that background was really helpful and knowing that Ochiba's got her own reasons for why she's like this. And I knew she would have been because back then, as I said in the last episode, the way that women got around back then, the way that they would maneuver is any way they could, right? They didn't have any direct power back then. So they would have to maneuver as best as they could from their position. And that sometimes meant controlling men with power and using any means that they could to do that. And that's what Ojiba did. Eventually, it looks like she's had a Shido in her pocket for a while. And how she did that, we don't know. Some people are thinking maybe they were sleeping together. That's possible. And during the episode, it actually hit me that maybe Ashido is the heir's father. That's possible too. Like if she kept Ashido in her pocket, maybe that's the way she did it. And that's how she got pregnant. Because remember I said in the last episode that, or the last few episodes, I was saying that I think that Toranaga is the father. And then someone in my comments mentioned that apparently in the books, spoiler alert for the books, if you haven't read them and you plan to, that ta the Taiko was known to be um, infertile basically. So 
the chances of him having an heir were basically zero. And they kind of confirmed that in the episode, because even though they showed the flashback of the Tycho doing what he needed to do to get her pregnant, we heard from his wife saying that there were many consorts and they had no luck. And then also we hear Ocheva say that there were hundreds, hundreds of them, and none of them got pregnant until her. So let's just do the math, right? We do the math that his own wife plus hundreds of consorts could not get pregnant. He's the common denominator. Clearly he was actually infertile. So for her suddenly to get pregnant, although apparently the wife subjected her to all kinds of things that apparently were quite barbaric. She didn't get into detail. Honestly, I'm not upset about it, but it was enough that I guess maybe they believed that that was the trick. But my guess is that she found another man. She found someone who actually could get her pregnant. I thought it was Toronaga, but maybe it's, Ochi it's, it's Ishido actually. But either way, someone is that baby daddy who was not the Taiko. So <laughs> that's the point. So now we have that understanding and I understand even more now why she'd be terrified of her son, anything happening to him, because the reality is that that's not even the Tycho's son. And if anybody ever figures that out, then she's up for grabs, right? That's the last leverage that she has. So I get why she'd be so passionate about protecting that at all costs. But I keep thinking maybe Toronaga's desire to protect this kid really is just out of love for the last Tycho, but I didn't get the sense that I don't know. We actually don't know much about his relationship with him. So let me not even talk on that. But yeah, I thought maybe it was because he knew it was his kid or had a chance that it was his kid. But maybe it is that he just had loyalty to the last Tycho and wants to do that. Because even now in that last speech where he was giving to his men, he was like, we want to go to war, but we have to make sure that the, the heir is protected. Like we're not going after him. So there's a lot of loyalty there. That's very interesting. But again, that could just be for his own personal interest too, because he said he does not want to be Shogun. So anyway, but back to Ochiba. Good to know a little bit more about where she's possibly coming from. She says that her hate for Toronaga is because she believes that he is the person who's instrumental in her father's death. Whether or not that's true, I'm not sure, but I don't think he was against it. Let's put it that way. I don't know if he planned it, but he wasn't against it. And I can't say he wouldn't do it because we've seen that Toronaga is no one to be played with. He's very smart and the way his mind works, it's possible, but I just don't see, unless of course, if he was friends of the last Tycho, yeah, maybe, maybe it's possible Tornaga was like, okay, Akechi, but why would, would he risk Akechi and his whole family? He would know that the blowback would have been, I don't know, but maybe he just thought that was the right thing to do. But I don't know, Tornaga doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would sacrifice a friend for a greater cause, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm just hoping that's not the kind of person he is. But again, we don't know. So either way, this is now apparently why she's got beef with Tornaga. I don't know if I buy that though. It's a very loose ac accusation. We did see her witnessing Toronaga and Akechi whispering, but I don't know. I feel like it's more than that. I really do. So yeah, I don't know. I personally don't think it's that. I still think her and Toronaga got close. I think her and Toronaga had a thing. She fell for Toronaga. Toronaga didn't pick her. And then the whole thing happened with her dad. And then she maybe thought that that's the reason Toronaga rejected her. I don't know, maybe, but it feels more personal than just that. I don't think she loved her daddy like that, but anyways. So we have that back history on Ochiba and I'm glad that we have it. And we see that she is ruthless. She said, you better figure out a way to make sure my kids stay safe. And it sounds to me like she probably came up with the hostage plan and Ishido did it, no questions asked. But interestingly, the Regency is very aware of the fact that Ochiba is the person pulling Ishido's strings, which again shows that he's not that bright. <laughs> She's like, like mm, yeah, things about this whole thing with Toronaga really did ramp up the second she came back. Interesting. And I'm guessing they're probably picking up on some energy between her and Ishido. So yeah, interesting, interesting about her. I do like her though as a character. Like, I mean, she's going to have to go. She's going up on my girl, you know, against my girl Mariko of Fuji. I can't have them touching any of those girls, but I hate to see the ladies fighting because they're all pretty smart, amazing women in their own way. I wish they could actually work together, but anyhow. We'll have to see. She definitely is a force to be reckoned with. And I'm really, I'm excited to see what more she's going to do, what other tricks she's got up her sleeve. Cause I got to think that Ishido is not her only option. I feel like she's got some more, some more cats in the bag that we might see if things go south with him eventually. But yeah, we see that, uh, should we go, should we go to the village? We'll actually finish up all the things in Osaka. We see that, like I said, the hostage situation happened in Osaka and that the regents got really upset about that, understandably, because they realized that they were no longer really get, being given a choice. They're starting to understand what we heard way back in episode two or one. One or the other, where that lady with the who wears the hood thing 
was saying to Tornaga that these guys are just the puppets for Ishido. He's going to take them out the second he gets rid of you. So I think they're finally starting to understand that they are puppets, that they were never really going to be equals or have equal footing, and that Ishido and Ochiba are running the show. And so they were like, we need to do something about this. But they're like, let's try to get out of this situation first and not have our families taken out before we do it. And it looks like they were going to vote. At least some of them thought, we'll just make the vote and say what they need to say. And as soon as we get out of Sokka, we'll do our own thing. But we see that ship, oh, I forget his name. The one that starts with an S, the older man said no. And he's been the one who's been actually <laughs> saying no the entire time. So I actually respect that. But he said, no, nah, I actually don't agree with this. I'm not being given a real choice here. You're basically forcing me to make this choice. So no, I think you need to release the hostages and prove that you actually see us as equals or I'm not going for this. But yeah, unfortunately that didn't go well and he decided to flee afterwards. I'm like, bro, you should have had an escape plan before you did that. But anyway, we see that unfortunately with his death, they're still in a situation where they're down a regent. So it's not good, but it's not bad. It still bought Toranaga a little bit more time from being falsely impeached, but not much because now everyone else they get are just going to be people who are going to do whatever they want because they don't want to end up like uh, that guy who died by bandits. So that is the state of things in Osaka. It's a bit of a mess, but it's about to get a lot less messy because as we saw Toranaga say at the end of uh, the episode, it's only going to be a matter of time before Ishido is going to have full control over this council because what's left are yes men. And yeah, he already has Ojiba back there pushing him along the way. So that was Osaka. And then back in the village, we see that John has approached Toronaga and asked him to well, actually first Toronaga gives John yet another promotion. They had what looked like a mass kind of funeral for all the people that were lost in the landslide. But he's like, listen, you know, I, he had a really good bar in there that I commented on in the episode about how even though people have died, it's proof that you lived. And I do think that's a very interesting way to look at it. And I mean, death is still sad, but it is proof that you lived. And every single one of us is a miracle, a one in a billion miracle that we actually made it to live in the first place. So even if your life was cut short, you still lived, right? But anyway, in this ceremony, we see that Toranaga actually ends up giving John yet another promotion because he's like, he saved my life again, quite literally. Some of y'all was just looking over into the crevasse. My man jumped in both feet and actually dug me out and, you know, smacked me on the back to get me breathing again. So he does owe John his life, doubly so, and he gives him yet another promotion. And he also says, you're going to be in charge of the cannon group, uh, the cannon people, which is the <laughs> job he just gave to Omi last episode, if I recall. So... People, as you see, Yabashige is annoyed, Omi is annoyed, even Buntoro, they're all like, why does this guy keep getting getting promoted? We hate him. But he offers this position. But as I said in the episode, Toranga's not dumb. The man's always thinking three steps ahead and he realizes he knows John wants to leave, but he's thinking like, I'm gonna give you a thief. I've given you more money. You've got this title. Like, why would you wanna go, right? He's trying to sweeten the pot, basically. And John does see through it. And later on, he's like, why would he give me all these things if he knows I want to leave? Like it's, these things are pretty permanent. Land is pretty permanent. You know, <laughs> that's a pretty permanent option, uh, option or offer right now. When I've said that I want to leave with my people who we've not seen. I hope John's men are still alive. Anyway, so that happens. And then we see that it's caused some, some drama. Yabashige, uh, Omi, um, the nephew, no, sorry, Yabashige, uh, Bantaro, all of them are annoyed at the fact that John keeps getting promoted. And we see that even Toronaga's son is starting to get a little bit like, why does my dad keep being so nice to him? And again, I think that his son is recognizing that the dad kind of respects him more at the moment. And again, it's not that he doesn't love his son, but after that dumbass movie did in the couple episodes ago, I don't blame him for kind of being like, but John, John's a bit of a, a hothead. He definitely has his, his edges, but he has more sense than my kid right now, right? So anyway, so we see that John goes and approaches Tornaga and he's like, listen, I don't understand why you're giving me all these things, especially when you know I want to leave. But then John says one more time, like, can I go? Like, give me my ship, give me my men. I will act as a naval officer for you. That's where my skill set is. And it's a mutually beneficial thing since he came here to take out some Portuguese people anyway. And once again, we see, <laughs> sorry, I have to laugh because I, I said in the episode, I absolutely love that Mariko just edits her, <laughs> her translation as she sees fit. But anyway, basically Mariko tells him like, 
Tornaga doesn't care about the Protestant Catholic war. Like that is not his business. He doesn't care about that. He's got a lot on his plate right now. He doesn't have to worry about what you got going on with them. And so he asks John like, yeah, why would I like the Portuguese are friendly to us right now. They're not warring with us. They're not beefing. Why would I ask for another enemy when I'm trying to fight off, you know, four other regions. And John is basically like, well, you know, isn't it mutually beneficial? He's like, the Portuguese don't actually like you. They're only here for profit. And as I said in the episode, I think that was a little hypocritical because that is why John came. It was twofold. He wanted to also attack the Catholics, but he also said, we're going to get rich off of Japan the way that the Portuguese did. So it's like, sir, you keep kind of forgetting this, right? Like there's really not a lot of difference between that motivation between you two. You're just on different sides of a religious battle. But anyhow, he, he says this, all of this, and we see that it annoys Mariko because Mariko has been trying to overlook the fact that John has a different faith than her and that he keeps attacking her faith. But, you know, she kind of gets a little annoyed here and she's like, bro, how do you know all this? Like your assumption of the Portuguese, that's not been our experience with the Portuguese. And they start bickering in the middle of all of this. And once again, our man, Tornog is like, I don't know what's going on with y'all, but like, I've had it, like it's enough, <laughs> right? He's like, why are you all always arguing when you're supposed to be translating here? So anyway, Tornaga des denies his request and tells him, listen, tell him I ain't gonna give him a ship because I know he's gonna bolt the second he gets a chance. And just to appease him, give him a night with one of the courtesans. Hopefully, just like we heard back in episode two, apparently Japanese people feel that pillowing is the way to solve all issues with a man. So <laughs> she tells him to do this. And of course, you know, she kind of gets a look on her face and I think that's what Toronaga wanted to see is I think he's picked up on the fact that there is something, oh, which actually ties into right before that, Bontoro came and gave a formal apology for what happened at John's place. And, and Toronaga was like, what is your issue? Like, this makes no sense. And he basically says, like, if you have such an issue with her, you should just divorce her. And Bontoro basically says that he feels like Mariko should be grateful for the fact that he married her considering her father. But although it sounds like her dad committed that act after, I mean, if maybe I'm wrong with the timelines, but anyway, but he feels like that. He's like, I saved her life. Like I'm the one who kept her from going to fight and she would have absolutely died if she had. She keeps saying she wants to die. She's been iced to me. She's never shown me anything. And now we kind of get to the crux of it and that, first of all, his expectation that she's supposed to just love him because he married her. Like, sir, this was arranged marriage to begin with. And it seems pretty clear to me. He never once tried to show some empathy from where she's coming from, right? Of course he sees it as, okay, I'm saving her life, much like Tornaga did by forbidding her from going as well. But in that moment, if he'd even tried to understand where she was coming from, the way John instantly empathized with her when she told the story of her family, she probably would have developed some level of affection for him, but he clearly already thought he was better than her because of what happened with her father. And then he basically expected her to just what? Love him when he looks down on her? when he treats her this way, when he talks crap about her family. So obviously she was not gonna give him anything. And she already said last episode that she's never given her husband so much as even hatred. She just, a wall, right? That's all that's been there. So he was saying that, you know, he thought that that would change at some point, but it never did. But now he's like with the engine, it's different. So he picked up already that the body language, the way he, she interacts with him, it's not the same as the way he treats her, uh, the way she treats him. And I guess he assumed that she would be that. Cause I feel like she's probably that way with every man with the exception of maybe Toronaga. But him seeing that he picked up on the energy. So that's really what he's salty about. And that's what he commented on. So Toronaga heard this. And then of course, when he saw them bickering he figured out something is up there. So Toronaga's big brain, he's like, yeah, you get this man a, a woman and I want you to go. I need you to make sure you can translate. Make sure you're there with them. Stay with them. Go, go with them to the room. Like. What, sir? What? Like, I'm pretty sure in the world of pillowing, not a lot of talking is needed. <laughs> it's not bad. I think he would have been able to figure it out. She could have figured it out even if they couldn't talk. But anyway, I saw what Tornaga was doing there. I think he's pretty much pushing this idea of like, one of y'all needs to figure out what you want. Your husband needs to divorce you. You need to say what you want, something, because I'm tired of all this. So anyhow, that feeds into the two of them actually going on this, uh, this courtesan date. And we see that John doesn't really understand why he has to do this, but she explains it's a gift and he needs to take it. And they have it with Kiku. And we already know that from a couple of episodes that Kiku and Omi have got a little something, something going on. I thought at first he was paying for her, but I have a sneaking suspicion now that they actually are just seeing each other. But I don't know if that's ever gonna come to anything. Cause I think back then as a courtesan, you couldn't just marry somebody. But anyway, 
this whole thing happens and Kiku comes in and shows exactly why she is the highest priced girl there. In that conversation, uh, Kiko or Kiku, you can see very much picks up on the fact that there is something going on between Mariko and John. And I almost felt like I said in the episode that maybe she was trying to set them up for something because I do feel like the the madam was trying to do that as well. Like she kept saying, oh, it's very private. No one will see anything. You know, it's the place where secrets stay inside. Like no matter what you want to happen, it can happen there quietly. And since you and the engine are always together, <laughs> right? I got that energy. Like she's like, if something should happen. So I feel like Kiku kind of picked up on that. And I like the way she sat behind John during that speech and left it so that Mariko would be in his eyeline and not her, because she could have stayed across from him, right? But I think she just wanted to kind of test those waters. And of course, when she said the way she was saying it, it was even affecting Mariko. But we see that she also got a flashback of her childhood and some of the dark days there. So interesting that that's what the memory that came up when she thought about intimacy with John, but that could be also a sign that this wall that she's had up emotionally for her husband and probably a lot of other people is starting to come down because of John and that fear is starting to come back with it, right? So that's what kind of what I'm thinking that that moment was about. But anyway, John has his moment and you see that Kiku is like, are you sure you don't want to come with us? And she was like, nah, that's okay. <laughs> Y'all go off together. But we see that John, you know, touches her hand a little bit there. So there's still definitely something there. I think it's fair to say they're done fighting now. They're probably not going to have many more personal conversations yet, but you know, the the Cold War is over now, let's say between the two of them. So that happened, proved that Mariko is jealous, even though she didn't say too much about it. Like I said, the editorials of her translation was enough to let us know that she was not happy about it. But anyhow, that's what happened there. And John for now is still stuck in place, but at least he's got some more things in his, uh, in his arsenal. He's got land now, he's got more money but he's definitely stacking up the energies within Tornaga's camp because they don't like the fact that he's doing so well and they feel like he doesn't deserve it, of course, because of their prejudice, but we'll have to see if he's able to win any of them over. But outside of that, last thing, we found out that there is a plan that Tornaga put in place quite a while ago with the help of that one dude, that old dude, what they call the Crimson Sky. And basically it's an all out rush to uh, rush into Osaka to just take out as many people as possible and take out all the other regions and make him the sole region, AKA the Shogun. And it was kind of a Hail Mary last resort. We have no other choice. This is the only thing we have left kind of, kind of plan. And we see as usual, Yabashige had no idea. His son didn't even know about it actually, which is smart. But they communicated this plan. And of course, Yabashige is like, this is suicide, is it not? And they basically like it. This is why it's a Hail Mary, right? This is kind of a last resort. And the son, of course, gets hyped. He's like, yeah, dad, we should do it. You should be Shogun. And his dad once again reminds him, I never wanted to be Shogun. Like, this is the kind of talk that has people thinking I've been plotting for years. He's like, I've never asked for it. I never pretended I wanted it. It's never been what I wanted. I need people to stop that. He's like, I don't want this to be our only plan. So he asks them all to come up with a plan that isn't that one. But then of course, what happens in uh, Osaka happens. And with the death of that regent, he's like, okay, yeah, we don't really have any other options. So he then, we ended the episode with him saying, we're going with Crimson Sky. And it worries me because telling, telling Yabashige anything ahead of time, I think is a risk. I'm praying that Toronaga's got some other side or backup plans that he's got going on besides this that he didn't tell anybody about because yeah, it doesn't sound like it's going to go well for them at this point. They don't have enough. Oh, I was going to say they don't have enough allies, but then it just reminded me that the priests might be siding with Tornaga now because they feel like Tornaga might be the right option in the sense of if they help him and back him in return, when it's all said and done, he'll have to give them what they want, which is more presence in his lands of the Catholic Church. Because we found out a couple episodes back that there are no churches for the Catholics in Edo. And they've been trying to get in there for a minute. So yeah, I forgot that the Portuguese might actually be helping them, which is going to cause an interesting conflict with John because, you know, he don't want to work with them. So, but if Toronaga's got to take it, Toronaga's got to take it, right? So yeah, another interesting episode. A lot, like I said, very dense. I'm sure I still missed some stuff, but those are the main things that stood out to me. I'm very much interested. I think we only have two episodes left. I think I heard there was eight episodes this season. So I'm wondering what we're going to do. Like, what are we going to cover in the next couple of episodes? If it is Crimson Sky... We'll have to see how she goes down and who walks away. I'm just really hoping that my girls, Fuji and uh, and Mariko stay okay. And I hope that my man Tornaga makes it. But I feel like if anyone would be willing to sacrifice himself for the cause, it'd be him. But 
I really don't want that because who would be left is terrifying. So yeah, another good episode, guys. I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed watching with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next video.